Hello everyone and welcome to day 2 of 12 days of BioPython, where I will post one video per day related to bioinformatics topics using BioPython until Christmas. I hope you will enjoy it and please make sure to subscribe if you still haven't to support this initiative. Today's topic is about accessing and querying the NCBI databases, so let's get started. The National Center for Biotechnology Information, NCBI for short, provides a large suite of online resources for biological information and data, including GenPack nucleic acid database and the PubMed database of citation and abstracts published in life science journals. NCBI databases can be accessed through web browser, but here we will access with BioPython using Entres, which is the data retrieval system provided by NCBI. When accessing NCBI databases, there are some rules that you need to follow, so make sure that you keep an eye on that. So always provide your email address and try to avoid large number of requests, hundreds or more during the peak times. Those are usually 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. American Eastern time on weekdays. And do not spam the server. BioPython will automatically make sure that you do not do that and that you do not post more than three queries per second. So make sure that you follow these two rules and keep in mind that others are also using this for important work. So let's make sure that we don't put the high load on NCBA servers by spamming too much. So as we already said, BioPython provides an interface through Entres. So let's import that first alongside CKIO module, which we will need later. We can specify our email address, which we will be using by assigning our email address to entrance.email. Now, if you are not sure which databases we can query and which jet databases exist, we can first query to get a list of all available databases. We can use eInfo function to get this information. First, let's create handle with entrance.eInfo and let's think about this handle as opening a connection to a servers. Then we use this connection to read and query a list of databases that are accessible through Entres. After we are done with reading, we can close this connection by handle.close and we can print all the keys from dictionary which is returned from our query. And we can see that we have a dblist key here and when we access it, we can see a list of all the available databases that we can access through Entres. In this video, we will focus on querying nucleotide database, which consists of collection of sequences coming from different so sources, one of them being GenBank. We will try to find a sequence of CRT gene going with name KM288867 in the parasite that causes the deadliest form of malaria. We will use eSearch function from Entres to search specific database with specific query. Again, we create handle by specifying which database to use when querying and specifying the term we want to search for. In this case, we specify a gene name and organism we want to query. Also, we define RedMax as 40 as we want to receive 40 records back. By default, it's set to 20, but you can set it up to any number you want. But again, make sure to not query the large amount of records. Also, the term is defined by enters query, so make sure to check the documentation if you would like to make some other queries. I will also put the link to the documentation in the description of this video. eSearch will only give us back a list of primary IDs of records, which we will then need to use in eFetch function to obtain records properly. We can see that count of the records connected to this term is 1374. But as we define the red max as 40, we only obtained 40 primary IDs. Let's hope that what we are searching for is in this list here. If it's not, then we will need to go back, query for another 40 terms and try to see if what we are searching for is in there. This is also good practice to not put a high load on the server. So try to uh, minimize the amount of records you search for and try to figure out if what you're searching for is there or not. If not, then try again. Now that we have IDs of re records, we need to retrieve records properly and we will use eFetch for that, which will, get, uh, which will give us back the full records from Entres. Again, we want to use nucleotide database, but this time we will provide the list of records that we want to get. 
Also, we want them in GenBank format to parse them with CKO module, so we define red type as GB. Now that we fetched the results, we will parse them with CKO module and we will save them as lists to avoid multiple queries in NTRES. This will allow us to query the Rex list multiple times without defecting the servers. When we do that, we see that everything is saved in Rex list. But again, we need to be careful because if we query the large amount of records, probably it won't fit in the memory. But we queried only 40. So now that we fetch the records properly, we have all the information about it, we can query the created list and try to find what we are searching for. So we will try to find CRT gene in the 40 re records we fetched and we, will, we hope that it's there. If it's not, then we will need to go back and query the query with eSearch again to grab another 40 records and then fetch the records proper again and do the same thing for them. In our case, we were lucky because what we were searching for, KM28867, was in, the, in these 40 records. And now that we have this record here, we can actually print its sequence. And this is what we wanted from the beginning. So if you would like to learn more about accessing the other databases, you can check the chapter 9 of BioPython tutorial. So I've, I linked it here and this notebook I will also link in the description of this video. Thanks everyone for watching and we will see each other tomorrow in the newest video. Bye bye!